various types of homologous series types of homologous series number 1 we have alkenes we have alkenes we have alkynes we have al alkanols from alkanols alcohol we can get alcohol from alkanols then we further have aldehydes aromatic alkanals aldehydes aromatic and alkanals are beyond your scope you will study them later on at advanced level so what we drink what our parents drink normally is there comes from al alkanols if you take alkanols you become blind or you die so from here we'll start with alkanes we start with alkanes alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons with the general formula cn h2n plus 2 where n is an integer integers are whole numbers therefore as per our syllabus, we'll only deal with the first 10 alkanes. So we will say when our n is 1 up to the 10th value. When our n is 1, we, only, we simply replace it from the general formula Cn H2n plus 2. So when n is 1, you replace here n as 1, that is C, 1, then H into 2 times 1 plus 2 equals to this is C1, H2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. C1, H4 is methane, methane. Meth is a Greek word meaning 1. N comes from the parent alkanes, alkanes. So they take the word N. So alk is a continuous chain. Al means continuous chain or the aliphatic compounds, aliphatic compounds, continuous chain. So methane is a hydro, an alkane with one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. When N is 2, you simply place C1, Cn, N is 2, into H, 2 times 2, plus 2. This is going to give us C1, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, C1H6. This is an ethane. When it's 2, it is ethane, eth. When N is 3, it is C, C3, H3 times 2, plus 2. That is C3, H8. That is propane. I want you to notice a trend class so that you now just make your work easier. We have C1, we have, this is C2, sorry, C2. We have C1, C2, C3. So our next is C4, C5, C6, C7, C8, C9, and C10. Then we have H4, H6, H8. There is a series by which they differ by H2. H2, H4, no, H4, H6, H8. The next one is H10, then H12, then H14, H16, H18, H20, and H22, where N is equal to 4, N here is equal to 5, N here is equal to 6, N here is equal to 7, N8, N9, 
and finally N10. From pro, uh, propane, when it has four carbon atoms with 10 hydrogen atoms, it's called a butane. When N is 5, C5H12 is a pentane. C6H14 is hexane, from the word hexagon, pentane, from the word pentagon, hexane. Pentagon is a five figure, pentane, pentagon, hexane, hexagon, six. Seven is heptane, eight is octane, octagon, octogenarian, octane. Nine is nonane, and ten is decane. Are we together, class? Thank you. From here, we can see this structure. These are called the molecular formula. Molecular formula. So from here, we want to get the structural formulas. So keep this in mind. We want to get the structural formulas. To get the structural formula, we will open the structures. So we can choose to do around uh, the first three from, from uh, methane to four, the first four. So the structural formula of methane. Methane is CH4. Methane is CH4. So from here, I want you to be attentive class and listen carefully. From here, we want to from the periodic table, we want to know where carbon and hydrogen lies. So I will draw a periodic table with the first 20 elements. So our periodic table is here, class. This is group one element, group two. These are transition elements, then uh, group 3, group 4, group 5, group 6, group 7, and finally group 8. These are transition elements. So class, be very careful, be very keen. I want to tell you the easiest way to get the first 20 elements, and it is in a song form. So you will sing along. Prepare yourself to sing along. We must enjoy this lesson class. So you start by saying, how he likes beer, but can not obtain food. Nelly nags Maggie. All smart people study classical Arts can can't. We want to identify these elements. The first element is hydrogen, second element is helium, third is lithium, fourth is beryllium, fifth is boron, sixth is carbon. So we will be looking at this. Seven is nitrogen, eight is oxygen, nine is fluorine, 10 is neon, 11 is sodium, 12 is magnesium, 13 is aluminum, 14 is silicon, 15 is phosphorus, 16 is sulfur, 17 is chlorine, 18 is argon, 19 is, is a potassium, you can also call it kalium, and 20 is calcium. Class, I want us to sing along. Let's start. 
how he likes beer but cannot obtain food. Nelly nags Maggie. Nelly nags Maggie. All smart people study classical arts. Can, can't. First 20 elements. So when you put them in the periodic table, we used to put hydrogen in here. Okay, these are period, period one, period two, period three, period four elements. So nowadays we write our hydrogen here. Why? Because group one elements are metals. So we represent our hydrogen as here. So instead of writing it here, you write it here. Then from hydrogen, you write helium, then lithium, beryllium, Sorry for this, but it's okay. So, group three, group four, group five, group six, group seven. Lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, uh, fluorine. Then helium is way up. Sorry. That's helium. Goes with this. Then neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, neon, magnesium. Aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon. This should be argon, not there. Sorry, let me just draw it again. Plus, I think there's a little bit of confusion, but it's an easy one. Just the same, same trend. Group, period one, period two, period three, and finally, period four. So group one, then here we have transition, transition metals or elements. So group one, group two, group three, group four, group five, group six, group seven, and finally group eight. Good. So from there we have how he, hydrogen we say it comes here because it is an unmetal. How he likes beer but cannot obtain food. Nelly nags Maggie. All smart people study classical arts. Can, can't. Very good. It's coming in very well. So from our table we are interested in carbon, and carbon is number six. With the electronic configuration of two to four. Now, from this statement, carbon requires four electrons in the outermost energy level to make it stable. Remember, we said we are starting with methane. Therefore, carbon requires four electrons from hydrogen in the outermost energy level to make it stable. So if we want to draw the structure, how they bond. Remember, when they bond, nonmetals, when nonmetals bond, that is carbon and hydrogen, they bond covalently, that is covalent bonding. When a metal and a nonmetal bonds, it is ionic bonding. But when a metal and a metal bonds, 
it is called metallic bonding. Therefore, for the nonmetals, they will bond covalently, covalent bonding. So we want to show how carbon bonds with hydrogen. So we have that carbon, then carbon already has four electrons here, two, three, four, identify them. Then we need four hydrogen atoms. So when we have hydrogen, I'm using different pens so that at least we can differentiate. So if these are hydrogen atoms, then hydrogen has four. So you simply, I'm using X to show that this is electrons from carbon, electrons from uh, hydrogen. So this is the structure, which can also be opened to us C. We can open this to C. C, then with hydrogen atoms. So this is the structural. Sorry, 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 sorry. This is the structural, structural formula for methane. Now we go to the next one, which is ethane. Ethane is C2H6. So this one we will move a little bit faster. We show carbon bonding with another carbon. Carbon bonds, those are the electrons. Then we have six hydrogen. So every, one, every other one will take three hydrogen atoms from both sides. So if we have hydrogen, they donate one electron, one electron, one electron, one electron, one electron, one electron. So this is ethane, which can also be written as C, carbon, and carbon bonding. Then you only fix the hydrogen atoms. The last one that we can do is for propane, so that we save time because there are 10. So for propane, so instead of drawing it in circles form, we will just write the formula of propane, which is C3, H8. So therefore it's C, C bonding, carbon, carbon, carbon bonding, and then you only fix the hydrogens. This can also be written as this. You write as C with how many hydrogen atoms? Three hydrogen atoms. Then another C with two hydrogen atoms. Then another carbon with three hydrogen atoms. This is the closed structural formula for ethane. But this is for propane, sorry. This is the closed structural formula for propane. But this is the open structural formula for propane. You can go on and on up to the tenth one. From here class, we will go to what is called nomenclature. Nomenclature, or is also called naming. We, you, you've seen, we've also, we, we've started naming from uh, methane, methane to decane, to decane. Now we want to proceed with further naming. Suppose there are branches, because we said carbon can also form branches. Suppose it branches, how do we name them? So in naming, we use the IUPAC. IUPAC is the International, International Union of pure and applied chemistry. IUPAC is like the ID name, like Paul Oweno Babu Ongeli is the ID name. 
They are those names that you are given by your parents from ta, daddy, mommy. Those are not names in the ID. So the ID name, Gina ya ID ya chemistry in Aitua, IUPAC, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Together? So from here, we will start naming them. If we start naming by one, let's take for example that. The first rule, make sure you clothe. Make sure you clothe carbon. Clothing means you show the bonding. It bonds with hydrogen. If you leave it without this hydrogen, this is wrong. Because you must show how it bonds with hydrogen. So in naming, in naming this, the first step write down, identify the longest continuous carbon chain. Again, identify the longest continuous carbon chain. Number one. So in our case, if we identify the longest continuous carbon chain here is one, two, three, four. You just count. Longest continuous carbon chain is four. And number four, we know very well that it is BU10. Okay? What of if we want to name this? Make sure you clothe it. Or we valishi a mask. Saizi kuna corona. If you don't if you don't put on a mask for the carbon, then it may be infected by corona. And you know that is now dangerous. So you clothe carbon with hydrogen. The first step in naming, identify the longest continuous carbon chain. In our situation, the longest continuous carbon chain can be, pay attention class, hang on my lips and be with my hands. One, two, three. What of, I want to move like this, this is horizontally. What of horizontal then vertical? One, two, three. What of starting from here? One, two, three. Therefore, the longest continuous carbon chain has three carbon atoms. Three carbon atoms. And the moment it has three carbon atoms, it is a propane. Propane. But we've not finished naming it. Why? Because we've only named that. That is propane. Anything else, write down, anything else outside the longest continuous carbon chain is a branch. Therefore, identify the branch. So if this is our longest continuous chain, we can see there's a branch here. So you identify, we want to identify what this branch is. What is this branch? We want to name the branch. From here, we can see the branch has one carbon atom. It has one carbon atom with hydrogen atoms, but they are Three. And then there's this one here. One carbon atom with three hydrogen atoms. But it has one hydrogen atom less from the, from the parent alkane group. Are we clear, class, or am I confusing? From here we have a branch. The branch has one carbon atom with three hydrogen atoms. But... There is less from the parent. The parent, if we have CH4, this is methane. This CH4 is methane, but we have CH3. So what is this CH3? We have carbon atom, carbon atom. Four hydrogen atoms, three hydrogen atoms. Therefore, an organic compound, a hydrogen, uh, sorry, uh, an alkane from here, an alkane with three Hydrogen atoms less in our situation is called an alkali, alka, alkyl group. It is an alkyl group. An alkane with one hydrogen atom less is called an alkyl. Class, alkanes with one hydrogen atom less is called an alkyl. Therefore, which alkyl group is this? It has one carbon atom. If it has one carbon atom, it's called a methyl. 
from the word methane, which is the parent alkane. So this is a methyl. Pay close attention, class. This is not the time to even wink. You can only afford to smile. Because I want you to concentrate here and get the naming clearly. Then after identifying the branch, the next thing we will ask ourselves, this carbon atom lies on which, this branch lies on which carbon atom? On what number of the longest continuous chain? So we have number one, number two, number three. So it lies on the second carbon atom on the, along the continuous chain. So you just combine the names. You start with the numbers, which is two. Start with the numbers, which is two. Then you go to the alkyl group, which is methyl. Then you join with the parent name, which is propane. So, this is called 2-methylpropane. Repeat after me, class. 2-methylpropane. I will give you another example so that we get used to them. So, let's take another example of another branch. Example 2. Class, concentrate here keenly, keenly. Our intention is to identify the branches. But I will not tell you where the branch is unless we, we follow the rule. So from our rule, the step number one, identify the longest continuous carbon chain. In our case, the longest continuous carbon chain, if we decide to count from here, we have one, two, three, four. We can also have one, two, three. We can also have one, two, three, four. So our longest continuous carbon chain has four carbon atoms. And if it has four carbon atoms, it's a butane. Butane. Step number one. Step number two, I told you to write down. Anything else which is not on the longest continuous carbon chain is called a branch. So this is not here, so it is a branch. So identify that branch. So what is the name of this branch? Again, it has one carbon atom with three hydrogen atom, one less from the parent alkane. So if it has one carbon atom and one hydrogen atom less from the parent alkane, it is an alkyl group, alkyl group, but an alkyl called methyl. Then the next step, identify on which carbon atom does the branch lie. So one, two, three, four. It lies on the second carbon atom. So when you collect them, you start with numbering two, methyl, butane. The next one, class, another example. So suppose we have this. And suppose we have this. Just keep also this in mind. But I told you the first thing you do, you have to clothe it. They have to form a bond. Before we go to this, let's check this. First step, identify the longest continuous carbon uh, uh, chain. Identify the longest continuous carbon chain. In our case, one, two, three, four, five, or... 1, 2, 3, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it is 5 carbon atoms that gives it pentane. 
when it is pen 10, that's we are done with it. Then anything else outside the longest continuous carbon chain is called a branch. So you mark the branch. This is what is there only. So this branch is also still a methyl branch because we said it is one carbon atom with one hydrogen atom less from the parent alkane. So this is a methyl. Then identify on which carbon atom does it lie? Number one, number two, three, four, five. So it lies on the second, which gives it the name two, start with two, then methyl pentane. Class, repeat after me, two methyl pentane. Next one, let me do this in a fresh, okay, let's name this first, uh, hydrogen atom, Step number one, identify the longest continuous carbon chain, which is one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. So it is five, which is a pentane. Then identify anything else that is not along the uh, longest continuous chain, carbon chain, is a branch. So identify this branch. Then name this branch. The branch is a methyl branch. Then identify on which carbon atom does it lie. One, two, three, four, five. It lies on the third one. Therefore, the name is 3-methylpentane. The name is 3-methylpentane. Then, be keen here, class. Be very keen. I'm bringing in another example that needs a lot of keenness. You clothe it. Class be very keen here. Step number one, as usual, identify the longest continuous carbon chain. The longest here is one, two, three, four, five. If we decide to go this way, one, two, three, four, five. If we go this way, one, two, three, four, five. So we do agree that the longest continuous chain has five carbon. That makes it a pentane. Anything else which is not along the longest continuous chain is a branch, so identify the branch. So if this is our longest continuous chain, which means these are branches, this is a branch, not branches. So this branch is there. So which name, what name do we give to this branch? Big in class, number one, this branch has two carbon atoms. The branch has two carbon atoms with how many hydrogen atoms? One, two, three, four, five two carbon atoms with five hydrogen atoms. From the parent, parent was C2H6. This is the parent alkane. The parent alkane is called ethane. Therefore, any, any alkane from here with one hydrogen atom less than the parent alkane any compound with one hydrogen atom less than the parent alkane is called an alkyl. But wh which, which alkyl do we have here? Because it has two and we have ethane, so this becomes an ethyl. You only take the word eth, then you add the word "-ile". So this is an ethyl. If it is an ethyl, we want to name this. The next step is to identify on which carbon atom 
does it lie from the longest chain? So it lies on the third carbon atom. So you will only take the number three, then take this ethyl, then join with this pentane. Plus, suppose these branches had three carbon atoms. If the branch had three carbon atoms, then it ceases to be ethyl. It is propyl. Propyl. If it was four, it is butyl. If it is five, it is peptyl. Peptyl from the word pentagon. If it is six, it is hexyl. Seven. Heptyl, 8 octyl, 9 nonyl, and 10 decyl. So we want to look at double branches. These were single branches. So when we are looking at double branch, I want you also to pay close attention because as, as we advanced, they become easier but a little bit confusing. So to remove the confusion, I only need you to be attentive. That's the only thing I need. The password to this is being attentive and just open your mind. So from here, we want to take an example. Example one. <laughs> Very easy. First of all, clothe it, because we said if you leave it naked, you know the disadvantages and advantages of being naked. So you clothe it with hydrogen. Step number one, class, identify the longest continuous carbon chain, simple. And from here, the longest continuous carbon chain we have begin, I start from here, one, two, three. I've started horizontally. Then I want to come this way. One, two, three. Or I go this way. One, two, three. Or I go this way. One, two, three. Or one, two, three. So we all agree that it has three carbon atoms that makes it a pro pen. Then anything else, same rules, anything else, which is not along the longest continuous chain, is a branch. So where are our branches? Anything else which is not here, we have a branch here. And anything else which is not here, we also have another branch here. Class begin here. So which type of a branch do we have? Deal with them independently, individually. So when we start with this, one carbon atom, Three hydrogen atoms, one hydrogen atom less. Methyl group, remember, remember, methyl group. If there were two, ethyl group, but now here is methyl group. Same to this, is also a methyl group. Then step number three, identify the number where the branch is, where, where, where the methyl group is making the branch. So this is one, two, Three. So it's making a branch on the second carbon atom. Cover this. Deal with this. So in naming you say two. Again cover this. Deal with this. It is two, two. They are branching on two, both of them. So you take care of them by saying two, two. Then we have a methyl group and we have a methyl group here. When it is one, it is methyl. When it is two, it is dimethyl. When there are three, when there are three, you say trimethyl. When there are four, you say tetra, not quadra, tetra methyl. So when they are here, you say two, two, dimethyl propane. This thing is as easy as reciting vowels. <laughs> so, whenever you separate a number and a number, you use a comma. Whenever you separate a number and an alphabetical uh, name, you use a hyphen. So, this is 2,2-dimethylpropane. Two, two, Example 2. 
example 2. Check, look at that and look, uh, look at it together with this. So, class, when you see such things, do not panic. Number one, just tell God thank you for giving you free marks. So, you clothe it. This thing, when you are even woken up at 3 a.m., you can easily answer it because it's the easiest ever. These are carbon atoms. So I want to separate it with this. I want us to name this. Number one, identify the longest continuous carbon chain. When we start from here, we have one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, or one, two, three. Okay, so the longest continuous chain has four carbon atoms, therefore it makes it butane. Butane. Then after that, anything else which is not along the longest continuous cha chain is called a branch. So we have two branches. So this branch is a methyl branch, as we have explained earlier, and this is a methyl branch. Then identify on which carbon atom does the branch occur. It is on the second carbon atom. So if it is on the second carbon atom and there are two branches, you deal with them in form of numbers as two for this, then two for this. Then because it is a methyl and a methyl group, it becomes dimethylbutane. Two, two dimethylbutane. Plus, let's go to this. Clothe it to avoid coronavirus, infecting it. Big in here, this one is hydrogen. Let me separate this from that. Step number one, identify the longest continuous carbon chain. One, two, three, four, or one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, or one, two, three. The longest continuous chain is number four, which is one, two, three, four, butane. Then anything else which is not there is called a branch which is not along the longest continuous chain. So this is a branch and then this is another branch. So and this branch is a methyl branch. This is also a methyl branch but it lies on which carbon atom? So you start here one, two, three, four. So we have one, two, three, four. It lies on this and this. Again, you can also uh, place it, number it when you come from the other side, which is one, two, three, four. So you notice, class, that when you go like this, it lies on the second, the first branch, and third, the second branch. Or the second, second, first branch, and third second branch. So you take it, you can start with this or like this. So you simply name it as two, then three, then there are two methyls, you say dimethyl butane. So class, as you can see, this is our naming with the double branches. This is example three. So after naming class, after naming, we want to show, we want to name them when they have halogens. 
Halogens are group 7 elements. Their characteristics is that they are gaseous in state and they have color. They are colored. Examples are bromine, chlorine, fluorine, iodine. In naming these ones, you simply add here, you simply write here bromo. For this one is chloro. For this one is fluoro. And for this one, iodo. So suppose we have an example as that. Number one, identify the longest continuous chain, which is one, two, three. If it is three, it is propane. Then because we have a, a bromine branching, it is bromo. This is the branch. So it is bromo. But on which carbon atom? One, two, three. On the second carbon atom. So the name of this is 2-bromo-propane. Suppose we have this. This is iodine with iodine. So with iodine, identify the longest continuous chain, which is 1, 2, 3, propane. After that, identify on which carbon atom does it fall. It, can, it falls on the, they fall, there are two, they fall on the second and the third, or the first and the second. So the most important thing here, we take the lowest possible values. So you take 1 and 2. You say one, two. We said when there are two, it is di, but because it is iodine, it is iodo, propane. We are almost finishing. Don't get tired. In the next few minutes, we'll be done. Next example with the halogen. When it reacts with chlorine, what do we get? Number one. Identify the longest continuous chain, which is methane. So it only has one carbon atom. Then how many chlorines do we have? We have three. So if it is three, it is tri -chloro methane. Trichloromethane is the chloroform, what we use to preserve specimen in the laboratory for biologists, for biology students, sorry. And we also use it to preserve dead bodies. Chloroform, trichloromethane. This is the formula. Now the last example we have. Longest continuous chain is methane. And then from here we have four chlorines, which makes it tetra, not quadra. Tetra, chloro, Methane. The last one on uh, halogens, suppose we have this. And then here we have bromine, chlorine, uh, fluorine, and iodine. Number one, identify the longest continuous chain, which is one, two, three, four. That is butane. Class, pay attention here. Then when we are naming this, we will use alphabetical, alphabetical. We'll name them alphabetical as they fall in that order. So we identify how they fall in various chains, one, two, three, four. So we can see bromine falling on one, so you say one, Bromo, two chloro, one bromo, two chloro, three fluoro, four iodo, but the name is butane. Class, repeat after me one bromo. 
टू क्लोरो थ्री फ्लोरो फोर आयोडो ब्यूटेन डू अवे विद दैट वन ब्रोमो टू क्लोरो थ्री फ्लोरो फोर आयोडो ब्यूटेन आवर लास्ट सब टॉपिक टुडे इज ऑन आइसोमास आइसोमेरिज्म द लास्ट वन वी ओनली हैव थ्री एग्जांपल्स देन वी वाइंड अप प्लस देयर केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज सो हियर वी हैव आइसोमास Class, this word should not be new to you. Isomers are organic compounds with the same molecular formula, but different structural formulas. Or isomers hydro are hydrocarbons with the same molecular formula. Molecular formula is same, but structural formulas. formula is different and if you can remember we were doing them before so it's easier to introduce it after doing it so if we take an example of butane if you are told to write all the isomers write all the isomers of butane the first isomer of butane butane is ch4 no c2 c4 sorry So C4 H10. So C4 H10. So the first isomer is C4. One, two, three, four. Then how many H? You just bond it with the hydrogen. So this is C4 H10. As we, now we want to compare it with another. compound with the same number of carbon atoms same number of hydrogen atoms but different structure so if we reduce by 1 here we get 3 and introduce that there we are almost finishing class don't get tired in a few this is where the exam is identify the longest continuous chain which is propane there are 3 1 2 3 propane then i name the branch because the branch is on the second carbon atom 1 2 3 this branch is a methyl branch so we name it we start with 2 then methyl propane as you can see class this structure also has 1 2 3 4 the c are 4 the h are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 there's one here sorry i didn't close it well 10 h10 so you can see c4 h10 c4 h10 they are the same but you can see this structure for c4 h10 and this structure for c4 h10 they are different so that's called an isomer of butane butane has two isomers this and this we can do for uh, pentane as we wind up don't get tired class breathe in out in again out another example if you want to do for pentane this is structure for pentane So pentane here has 1 2 3 4 5 C R 5 and hydrogen are how many hydrogen atoms 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 We want to get isomers of pentane just reduce by 1 and branch it Branch it there we branch it after branching it you name it identify the longest continuous chain this is called pentane but what do we call this identify the longest continuous chain as four carbon atoms that makes it butane 
then we have a branch on the second carbon atom, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is a methyl branch. So when you name this, it is 2 methyl butane. So this again can be branched. That's okay. So class from here. The first assignment before we finish, I want you to get all the isomers, all the isomers of hexane, all isomers of heptane, all isomers of octane, all isomers of nonane, and all isomers of decane. That is our assignment for today. As I finish the class, I finish it with the chemical properties. This will take only two minutes. The chemical properties of alkanes. Number one, we will use methane. So when methane reacts with oxygen, you get carbon dioxide and water but they are all in gaseous form. When methane reacts with oxygen, combustion, when you burn it, they are all in gaseous state. You get carbon dioxide and water. So in this form, you can balance the equation. We have two hydrogens here, we have four hydrogens here. Therefore, you only add two here to have four hydrogen uh, atoms. Then here we have Two times oxygen is two hydrogen, two oxygen atoms plus two oxygen atoms. Those are four oxygen atoms. But on the other side, we have only two. Therefore, you add two there to make it four oxygen atoms. Then we have carbon atom and carbon atom. So this is combustion of methane. Then we want to see reactions with halogens. The last one, last but not least, reactions with halogens. They react with halogens alkanes react with halogens by substitution reaction, substitution reaction. So therefore, if we have methane, you react with chlorine, you will get CH3Cl plus HCl. This one again can react to get CH3Cl plus chlorine. This you get CH2, Cl2 plus HCl. HCl is hydrochloric acid. Again this reacts with chlorine. You get CH CH, Cl3 plus HCl. And the last one, when this reacts with chlorine, you get CCl4, that is the tetrachloro, tetrachloro, methane, methane plus HCl. But they react in the presence of sunlight. They react in the presence of sunlight. Class, these are our equations. Today, that is where we will stop our class. And I want to wish you all the best. Know that chemistry is chemistry. At least take on a daily basis 30 minutes to do mathematics, 30 minutes to do chemistry on a daily basis, 30 minutes to do physics, because these are subjects that require practicing. So you must practice, it, you must practice them on a daily basis. We end our class today, and the next class we will deal with mathematics topic-wise. We will not handle the questions, we will just go topic by topic so that our candidates, our learners can be well informed. I take this opportunity to wish you all the best, and know that we are together, don't be intimidated, by anybody from the government 
who is not happy with what we are doing, our gray brain capacity is at optimum, better than that person. And may he continue basking in the glory of his ignorance. Thank you. God bless you all.